Nicole. And I'm Katie. And this is Katie and Nick Knit. Episode one. That's right. The very beginning. Um, we are starting a podcast as two knitting friends to talk about our crafting journeys, both, well, not just both, knitting, crochet, a little bit of everything in between, and uh, whatever pops up in between. We have whatever a lot slips of through the edits. That's right. <laughs> So yeah, so for our first episode, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about how we got into our different fiber arts hobbies, um, which the number of which seem to be growing by the week. So get ready. Um, yeah, talk about a few of our favorite projects, what we're working on. You know, we have some stuff huge. that we'll talk about every week and then some stuff that we'll mm -hmm. talk about just that week. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a few things, especially in the beginning, maybe that we'll keep like our whips, FOs. Fun stuff like that if you're mm -hmm. used to knitting podcasts. That's right. Yeah, I know um, both of us are fans of different knitting podcasts, other knitting too podcasts. Many. So I think I just... can replace my like cable at this point. <laughs> right. Netflix gone. <laughs> Hulu out of That's here. Right. All the YouTube all the time. Um, <laughs> but it's just fun. It's like it's nice to have something going in the background while you're knitting or crocheting or whatever. And For sure. just, you know, makes you feel like you're part of a little community, which we are. I mean, this is a, a really awesome community we've gotten into and just, I don't know. It'd be fun to throw our hat in the ring and make something for somebody else to watch while they knit and get yeah. a little laugh here and there, whatever. We <laughs> met at our local yarn store, which kind of um, leads us to our little origin stories That's of how right. we got started. How did you get started? Did you knit or crochet first? Um, I knit first. So I actually taught myself to knit. And when I say that, I mean literally like I taught myself the knit stitch and that was it uh, in grade school. And I, over the course of the years, made like a dozen really ugly garter stitch scarves of varying widths and lengths. That's yeah. what I hear for people mm -hmm. who started knitting. I amassed like a hefty bag worth of acrylic yarn and, you know, just kind of stuffed it in a closet for years and years. I taught myself from books. Like I would check books out of the library because this was the 90s. I could never. No, that's why I didn't get any further. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm left-handed and I think I learned things a little right. different because of that. I think I knit right-handed so to speak if there's such a thing but yeah I just I I could not figure out how to purl for the life of me and I gave it up for years at a time and I would kind of pick it up make a scarf give it up I always really had fun with it though and so the beginning of last year actually it was like around Christmas time oh it was Christmas time I got a cold and I oh, haven't yeah. been sick in three yeah. years and I was so bored and I was like what am I supposed to do with my life right technically now technically two years ago right what year no, was this? It was a year and a half because it was um, oh, yeah, yeah, beginning yeah. of 2023. Okay. So whatever. I don't know. It's the end of March. I'm like, I don't know what day it is anymore. Um, it's the first day of spring. It is. Happy spring. You Happy fall if you're in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> Happy whatever you are celebrating today. Um, anyhow, yeah, at the beginning of the year, I was like, maybe I'll teach myself to knit again because I had taken up loom weaving a little bit during the pandemic. And so I had some yarn. Did not have knitting needles. I think I sent my husband to Joanne's to get me some like straight needles and uh, watched one YouTube video and figured out how to purl. And I was like, oh, love it. YouTube. Then you were cool. off. And then I was off. So ever since then, I've just been nonstop making stuff. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people on Instagram making really amazing things. And, you know, they were fairly new. And I was like, you know what? If they can do it, I can try it out right. and see if I can do it. And it's just kind of snowballed from there and since then I've started spinning um I had tried crochet a couple times and I'm like I have a crochet project right now but I had Thanks. only made two hats and I think given that up <laughs> so yeah I'm doing a little bit of uh, a few things at the moment we'll see what happens so what I mentioned you? that we met at our local yarn store how far into your knitting journey did you start going there um it was about five months I went there in March after I started knitting and I bought two little skeins of yarn and went on my merry way and I was like cool I guess it's my local yarn still awesome um, was that like your first hand dyed experience because I didn't know was. about hand dyed until I went to when I went to cast on yeah I well actually let me take that back I had ordered some stuff online I don't know I don't want to like name drop brands and then not be right about whether they're hand dyed <laughs> I had ordered some stuff that seemed kind of cool I'll put it that way but it wasn't like indie dyers or anything yeah. um but yeah, I mean, my one of my first ones was junk yarn, and that's oh nice. That's a good a good hand dyed. Um, that was my first hand dyed too. Was it? Oh, yeah. that's cute. Okay. Astronaut Barbie. Yeah, mine is called Graham, and I can't find it online anywhere. Whenever I put it in Ravelry, it's like eh. retired. 
Ah, oh, sad. <laughs> um, so anyway, collector's edition. Love that. But yeah, so it was a couple months after that that I started going. It was like kind of towards the summertime. I think it was June. So what is that, six months in? Yep. Yeah. Nice. How about you? What's your origin story? So um, I was surfing Pinterest. As one does. To pick up one more craft that I didn't need. And saw this adorable crochet baby doll. And I'm like, why buy it off Etsy for $30 mm -hmm. when I can make it for two? Because I'm like... There you Yarn go. from Michael's, $2, yeah. made a crochet hook, sure. Um, tried to learn on YouTube, which mm -hmm. is what I do, you know, like if I want, that's how I learned to do stamping, because like mm -hmm. that's a thing. Mm -hmm. My little creative journaling, that's where I started out with that. And I started with like a beginner baby doll crochet video. I was just going for it, nothing was happening. I had never, I had crocheted <laughs> before, but I was literally just like making chains yeah. to then tie around my wrist. And I'm not even saying like a slip stitch to like mm -hmm. make it whole. Like, I know I was making a, chain, making a chain, cutting it, throwing it around my wrist. Like, yeah. you know, sewing it to a purse maybe when I was little or something. Yeah. And um, I need to drink a tea one sec. It's all good, tea break. And kept trying, maybe three or four days. Reached out to my cousin. I'm like, hey, can you come over and show me how to make this crochet baby doll? She racks at crochet. She's been doing it. That's who taught me how to chain. Okay. And um, her name is Rachel. Rachel came over. She tried. She was like, all right, what do you want to learn first? And I'm like, I want to learn how to do this leg. And it starts with a magic ring. She's like, do you know, <laughs> do you know how to chain? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I had not tried in so long. She's like... Do you know what a single crochet is? I'm like, huh? Nice. <laughs> so she was like, I think we should start with the basics. So she told, taught me how to chain and single crochet. I still wasn't quite understanding it, but I like spent the whole night just chaining away. Oh, yeah. And I kind of felt bad like messaging her again saying like, am I doing this right so many times? She totally wouldn't have cared, but like I was just going for it. And I had Googled crochet lessons near me because I had read that some libraries do them mm -hmm. or like I did not I was not even considering local yarn stores at the time like right. in my head that wasn't even a thing right um I knew like Michael's and Joanne's yep and our local yarn store popped up said they had knit and crochet night mm -hmm. I called to make sure that wasn't outdated because I know some of the stuff changed during COVID even yeah, though this yeah. is literally like three years after right um this is in March of last year and I called, she answered the phone. She said they were still doing it. It was actually that night. Um, I ended up going that night, walked in with like a project on my Pinterest and <laughs> no yarn. And so, a dream in your heart. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> walked in, she was like, hi, you know, how can I help you? And I was like, I called earlier. I want to make this project. She's like, okay, do you have any yarn? And I'm like, no. She's like, do you know, do you know how to crochet? I'm like, no. <laughs> I was hoping I could just watch you guys. And I did for a few. It was me, the woman working, and one other woman. Mm -hmm. The other woman ended up leaving early, so it was just me and yeah. Rachel sitting there. Yeah. And not Rachel, my cousin. Um, so I kind of got like a one-on-one -on -one lesson on mm -hmm. accident almost. After she showed me how to single crochet, double crochet, I was off. Yeah. Like I you started were making. You yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, Katie. <laughs> I, I made my first project, like successful project, technically was, I guess, this little yellow bookmarker, but it wasn't really a bookmarker. Nice. I was just learning to like single yeah, and double do, crochet. Do thing. Yeah. Then yeah. I went home and made this sunflower coaster out of um, something that a coaster really shouldn't be. And I think it was like wool and acrylic, which would not actually work for something hot, but I was like thinking a hot pad oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, it took me so long. Like, thinking about it, I yeah. bet you it took me four hours. Now I can whip that thing <laughs> on, like, 30 minutes. Like, but that's where I started from. Mm -hmm. And from then on, it was, like, bookmarks and the little tulip car hangers and mm -hmm. whatever else I saw for fun, trendy right. mini Pinterest crochet things. So Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I started out, I think, again with another scarf, but this time it had pearls in it. So it was gorgeous. Uh, just kidding. It was a disaster. <laughs> but... Um, I saw that someone was knitting socks, and I was like, this is just a concept that had never occurred to me before, knitting my own socks. Right. And I was like, I'm like, oh, this is something women did in the 1800s. Like, <laughs> I'm such a homesteader. <laughs> like, wow, I could do this in my own house. That's cool. So right. I, that was my kind of, like, dream was to knit my own socks. And 
I'm on like pair number seven now and literally my last pair of socks, my most recent pair, I finally feel like I know how to knit socks. Like every pair has gotten increasingly better. It's like evolution. It just kind of love it. gets more sock-like as I go on. <laughs> I still have not uh, crocheted my daughter a baby doll. Aw. <laughs> I have made her a bunny. Someday. And it is yeah. her like nighttime thing. Oh, like see, that's, that every counts. single night. I'm talking yeah. like the most babyish pose, you know, Aww. going to sleep holding it like this. It's so, so sweet. sweet. So <laughs> out of some chenille. That was another Cute. thing. When I first started, like, I know chenille is still so big, mm -hmm. but everything that I loved, I was it was all oh, chenille. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that at the time, but mm -hmm. I'm like, I wanted to make all the plushies. Mm -hmm. I still want to make the chickens. I have chickens mm -hmm. and anybody that sees anything crochet and chicken related or knit because I just started knitting recently um, in October. It's sent to me. Instagram DMs mm -hmm. loaded with chicken stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love every bit of it. You said about the, the plushies. Um, I forgot a small chapter in my fiber arts journey. I Ooh. got into amigurumi for like half a second. <laughs> so I said I made like two crochet hats. I also made an egg that had little Love. eyes and a smile. It was like, yeah, How big. did you forget that? I know, this is so sad. Um, the egg, I feel like I might want to sew the egg or like just <laughs> insert the egg into my chicken. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. <laughs> really don't, really don't worry. Um, but what else did I make? Oh, I made a coffee cup with no coffee in it. So it's like kind of a collapsible little yeah. happy coffee cup. I don't a little know. Little pen cup. Yeah. Crochet some pens. Yeah, I got a cute book and I wish I could remember the author's name. I'll, I'll link it. But uh, yeah, super fun. And I was like, that's fine. I did that. <laughs> I love <laughs> I it. Done. A little bit, little bit of experience. That's right. That's I right. also feel like a lot of people who crochet start out with granny squares. And I don't know how because there's oh, so many yeah. ends to weave in. I'm like, I've never weird. made one. It's my least favorite thing yeah. to weave in ends. I love granny squares. Mm -hmm. I love the look of them. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, my I had made a granny square shrug. In the beginning, this is the second one that I made, but yeah. this is one of my favorite projects I ever made. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. It's out of uh, a Karen cake. No, I'm also nice. terrible at telling wrong side from right side. Hey, I still don't know whether the sweater is on backwards, so here, you want me to hold a corner? Yeah. yeah. So this is literally a giant I granny want. square that you... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> seam on the sides. What am I doing? Yeah, it's like folded in oh, half a little oh, bit. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. I gotcha. Sleeve. So it's a giant granny square that you fold and seam on the sides. And I'll try it on. It's a little cocoon. Um, I never changed colors on this. It was just one of those Karen cake wow. cakes from Michael's. It really. Oh. It looks like it I'm not lined up really nice. Like messing up my. Uh, no, you're good. You're good. You know, doing this. Oh. Yeah, no, probably. I don't know. <laughs> we have these little mics with these little thingies on them, and I just tapped it, so we'll see what happens. It's the first time. We'll see. Anyways, <laughs> this is a Karen Cake um, yarn that I mm. used, and I do have the pattern ready to be linked to. I'm going to step out of frame really quick and put this on so you can check it out. I'll put some sort of, like, cut scene in here with some <laughs> waiting music or something. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is my Granny Square Shrug. Mm-hmm. One of my uh, favorite projects, not not one of my first mm -hmm. for sure. I think it was maybe like my fifth or something, but it took me a while to get to one of my faves. Oh yeah, like to to make something that I was like, oh my god, I'm over the moon about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's one of your favorite projects you had so far? Um, so we were we were kind of brainstorming on what we were going to talk about, and all of my favorite projects that I pulled are all socks, which is you know it's fitting because I said I want, got into this to learn how to knit socks. But yeah. I really like knitting socks, but socks are not my favorite thing to knit. I really have fun knitting sweaters, and I have fun knitting, like, color work stuff that's, I don't know, not socks. Old. But, like, I, I like, you know, socks are fun. It's kind of a quick hit. Like, you get it done, and you're like, I made a sock. Right. Cool, I made another sock. I don't get second sock syndrome because I'm like, I got to get this done. I want the pair. Yeah. Um, but I have a couple that I can share. Get my notes back on. Um, so... I have three pairs of socks that I brought and I'm gonna do them in chronological order. These are some of Summer Lee's sock patterns. This is from her wide rib sock set. And if you don't know Summer Lee, she is like the, the bomb sock lady. <laughs> she actually just put out a really cool book, um, The Sock Project, that has a ton of patterns in it. It's really cute, really cool uh, design and everything. So of course I snapped that right up and love it. But this is the ultra wide rib. They look <clears throat> real squished because they are all ribbed. But the yarn, the pink yarn, I love this yarn. This is from the Sheepy Shire. Um, it is their staple sock in Auga. And the blue stripes are Knit Pick Stroll in, what is this? This is Rhapsody. 
So pretty cool, fun bubblegum socks. Uh, after that, I did my first Colorwork socks. These are probably the ones I had the most fun with because I had just started doing color work and I am still really new at color work. Those are so recent. Can I see them? They are, yeah. Um, so this this was kind of funny. I was knitting my second one. This is the Basic Doodle Sock by JB Lomax. Um, she's really well known for all her, her doodle patterns and they are just fun and awesome and modular and I got such a kick out of doing this. Um, this is Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering kettle dyed in Nymph Sorry, Nymph and Silverton Tona. I love it. <laughs> are these called floats? These are what floats yes, are? Yes, on the inside, the floats, yeah. So a challenge doing knitting, uh, <coughs> knitting color work on socks Sorry. is to keep your floats loose. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge with any kind of color work that's stranded. But I just, you know, I don't know. Some people will like knit inside out mm -hmm. and do it that way. And I just, I just really pay attention to the keeping the floats loose and I haven't had a problem. The thing that was kind of funny about these is I knit my second one while I was watching the Barbie movie with my parents. And I left out like a whole little row of the color work down here because oh I my was goodness, so no one like, know. excited and <laughs> just keep, keep going. Right. It's one of those things that like, I think every single sock I've knit has some mistake in it that is, I hear you. you know, no one will know about but me. But that's I, like how, honestly, that's how every project of mine is. Oh my God. Yeah. I think that's just, <clears throat> what was Sorry. it? I heard somebody refer to it as a humility stitch. <laughs> Some mistake in every project. I literally love that. This is the most recent finished object that I have. Um, these these are kind of an amalgamation. Honestly, they're kind of a hybrid of the Summer Lee method and the Jamie Lomax toes, I think. But I was really proud of myself because I kind of, uh, like I said, I sort of figured out like what kind of socks I want to knit and yeah, how, like how to best fit my foot and how to make it look like a sock. Look, it looks like a sock. Come so on. what's different about the toes? Like I only, um, know, I've done crazy sock lady mm -hmm. pattern and summer lee knits. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? I mean, really, I feel like there's not much difference in the toe. So what's the difference in that one? So I haven't tried the crazy sock lady yet. Um, I know she's big in our, in our little knitting circle. Yeah. So I want to try her method at some point. Um, Summers, you don't decrease as fast at the tip of the toe, and Jamie's, you decrease a little faster at the gotcha. tip of the toe. So your foot must be longer, right? Um, in one it, than it the other? That, I think Summers, her toes end up being a little bit more trapezoidal at the end. Ah, okay. And okay. Jamie's had a little more roundy kind of feel. And I, I don't know, I think the roundy sort of fits me a little better. I'm still trying it out. I mean, who knows, yeah. you know? But so that, this, like I said, I mean, it's the Summerly, like, you know heel flap method and the short rows and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with these because I just kind of was going along and I only had to refer to the patterns a couple times. And this is also Knit Picks Hawthorne. Um, I think this is called North Star Kettle. And then the pink is La Bien Aime in Florida Morganite, which I love. It's like my favorite pink. Florida Morganite. Florida Morganite. <laughs> okay, so you, little, little, little. you did really stripe those. Those aren't self-striping? That is correct, yes. Well, so you can see my little jogs on the inside. But yeah, I think those are my favorites so far, honestly. I just Isn't fun. it crazy that people who don't knit would never ever notice that? But yeah, like, oh yeah. yeah. Us that do us that like knit, you do you hone it. right in on it. <laughs> <laughs> do you have other I do. favorites you want to share? I have other faves. Yours. So these were Pardon the dog hair, hopefully you can't see them in the <laughs> camera. Um these were my second this was my second sock. My first finish pair. Mm -hmm. My first sock was um, a sock for my daughter that I don't have, but that was actually my first time knitting. I, I went to a class. Mm -hmm. They're like, you have to know how to knit and purl. I'm like, okay, great. I got there. I'm like, hey, this isn't working. I had no clue how to purl. I was just like backwards knitting. I don't even yeah. know what I was doing, yeah. but got through the class. My sock looks great. Um, I will bring it next time, but I must talk about it. I won a raffle from Grocery Girls Knit. And in the raffle, I got this Woolens and Nash self-striping yarn and a, a mini to go with the sock. Mm -hmm. But I didn't knit at the time. And that was really my push. I'm like, okay, now I seriously have to learn how to knit. Like, so I was all about it. This was my very first sock for myself. And it is Summer Lee sock, basic sock, SOS. Yes. The school uh, of sock. School sock. <laughs> nice. Um, in Woolens and Nash. And then, like I said, this mini is also from there. Um, and it took me a long time to finish. They are my fave. This made me fall in love with self-striping yarn. 
I cannot wait to get more. I've already got more. Um, oh, this looks so good. It looks so much like a sock. My first sock looked like a, an amoeba. It was really like, <laughs> yeah, that's what you said. Not. A I'm sock. like, it might be this helping it, but it does. Yeah. They do fit. Yeah. I remember like, I literally had barber cord shoved onto my nine inch. Oh yeah. Trying them on every two seconds because yeah. I was so scared and sweating when I'm doing the toe because I'm like, <laughs> I did mess this up a lot, especially with the heel flap because I'm like, if I drop one stitch, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Right. I don't know how to pick stitches back up. I don't mm -hmm. know how to, I do know how to reverse knit, but like very. I mean, that's a pretty ambitious, like beginner knitting project. You know, <laughs> you just, you I've never done it. a scarf yet. Yeah. Like, right. And I am obsessed. This, um, <clears throat> what'd you call it? A humility stitch? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, my humility stitches <laughs> and this, <laughs> the, like my ribbing is messed up and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, literally no so one would good. ever notice. It looks so good. It's yeah. 10 times better than my first sock was. I'm obsessed. Yeah. And Summer Lee does do like a high um, leg. Mm -hmm. I do not like high socks, knit mm -hmm. or, or not. So I winged it, wonged it, you know, um, <laughs> and went with whatever length I decided was yeah. right. I love it. They stick like right out of my vans oh, or that's fun. just a smidge out of like my little high top shoes. So my next socks that I'm working on, I'll show in a little bit. Those I did just a smidge higher, but I do totally love these. Um, and once you start knitting socks, like I've bought myself knockoff Burks so that I can like show them off. I'm like, I can't stop wearing socks in summer. I have to, when else am I going to wear these? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so fun though. Like that's one of the best things about knitting socks is you can customize to whatever footwear you like. Right. Like, I love it. Oh, you want to have a contrast to like mm -hmm. your Burks or, you know, you wear high tops, make them tall enough, whatever. I know. I love it. And then, <clears throat> actually, I guess I lied because this was the second sock I ever knit. That was the third. <laughs> this is the first finished pair that I have though. Right. Right, right, right. This, I bought the Crazy Sock Lady pattern and mm -hmm. I wanted to try hers. And these were two random scrap yarns that I have. So this is actually my junk yarn. I didn't, I kind of oh, forgot okay, about that. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is Fashion School Dropout. It came in a mini kit mm -hmm. from my LYS. And when I bought it, the Bredna, the owner, was doing this like mini granny square lovey. Mm. I was totally all about it. Yeah. I did keep my kit for that. But I did not want to use this color in it. So I was like kind of using just two random things I had in my stash. Mm -hmm. Well, I ended up totally falling in love with this yarn because I was doing it right before Christmas. And I'm like, this is kind of like Cindy Lou Who and the Grinch. Yeah. yeah. So I was freaking out because I'm like, wait, my sock actually turned out. Like, and I don't have <laughs> another one of these skeins because right. it was a mini skein. And my friend Linda brought me hers Aww. and gave me. So I've never finished. This one is on Sock Island or whatever. What's it called? Well, it's, it, that one's on Sock Island. Okay. Yeah. Sleeve, so, sleeve Island is just when you're like, all you have to do is sleeves and you're kind of chilling there forever and ever. Yeah. Like I am right now on my sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Same. We'll get there. And then, but like my, my ribbing on this looks fabulous. My toe looks mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. I can vouch for it. I can see it. My, uh, high def. My gusset pickups or whatever they're called. Yeah. I do mine with a crochet hook. Eventually I'll learn yeah. with a knit, but I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because this one is a little big and so is my very. Oh, the little hole at the yeah. corner. Yep. My yeah, very, I mean, that's, the that's sock, the like my whip sock, it yeah. also has that. But yeah. again, I'm sure I'm that's going to be, it like comes with time too. Yeah, I'm not going to be like interviewing it. your toes. Like, yeah, it's going to be fine. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not that kind of podcast. Yeah, there's that. And then, <laughs> so those are like my favorite little whips. Yeah. I mean, FOs rather. Yeah. Another one is this whole thing. Is this little thing. Yeah. This is Flora, my emotional support chicken. She's a beaut. I love her. She's so big. I'm like so excited <laughs> yeah, to see her in she's person. She's huge. Just like, her pictures, like, she looked huge. And she's... Compared to my head, giant. She's a behemoth. She's like a state fair prize winning hefty chicken. You're right. Yeah. I'm going to crochet a ribbon for her. her. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I took her to work. People just literally... Oh, my old oh. boss just gave her a squeeze. See, Everyone keeps saying you should have put eggs inside her, which... That's, <laughs> that's where that comment came from. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what happens to yours, but yeah, um, this is a pattern by wrapping back. This is a pattern <laughs> by Annette Corsino, um, which is an, ad an adaptation of a pattern by the late Bev Galeskis for fiber trends. So you can find the pattern on Ravelry. This is what we were posting on our Instagrams about. So mm -hmm. we're doing a craft along. Mm -hmm. um, people are doing it a few different ways, not the craft along, making the chicken itself. 
You can do knit or crochet. Mm -hmm. Mine is crocheted. Katie is knitting. I'm actually going to pull mine out and show yeah. that. Um, mine looks like roadkill right now. Please don't judge. You can either, you know, obviously do it in scraps, <laughs> which I chose a little bit of both. I did buy two yarns for mine, mostly because I want to make another one. Right. Mine's so, all scraps. <clears throat> yours is so cute. Thanks. Yours is so cute. And see, what is this yarn? Mine does look a little smaller than yours. This one on the end is Hedgehog Fibers. So um, this is one of the first sock yarns that I bought, actually. And it was a really good sock yarn, but I think I didn't know what I was doing when I washed it. And I should have put a color catcher in and the black kind of like bled into the other colors a little bit. So I was like, I don't want to do another pair of socks from those right what now. What bummer. It's fine. I mean, they're just kind of grayish. But I was like, how pretty and vibrant would this be for chicken tail feathers? Aww. And indeed, it is. So, that. yeah. How about your other ones you have in there? Um, this one. Oh, that's burgundy, huh? I yeah, the burgundy brown. is from a sweater that I knit. It's like a blue and burgundy striped sweater. It's called the Sally sweater. And it is Wool the Andy's Worsted from Knit Sally, if you want. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't remember what yarn the mint green is it's it's just like kind of a regular wool yarn but i bought it over the summer so i could dye it with indigo nice because i grew my own indigo plants and i was like like i said i'm just you know jumping in the wait so here. is that your color then mm -hmm. oh that's yeah awesome. so um i dyed that mint green <clears throat> yarn and i was like i don't have enough of this to really do anything with it but i do have enough to make chicken stripes love <laughs> this is it's some um, i think it's like uh an alpaca I don't know. This is from that hat that I knit for your, your craft along over the over the oh, winter. Oh, those oh two. yeah, I Christmas see it tree hat. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what all these are. This one's Koigu. This is from my helianthus top, my like berry stripe color top. Nice. Um, this <coughs> orange one is Brooklyn Sorry. Tweed, and it's from a hat that I made my dad for Christmas. I think that's everybody. That's everybody. So yeah, I got to stuff mine. Nicole brought over the rest of the. Uh, Glittery eyes. eyeballs <laughs> for me to choose from. This is her tummy. This is great. So I'm going to have to do some surgery. Wow, and man. That's, chicken. Yeah, mine mine turned out so much bigger. I, I, I mean, I maybe when remember, I mine, it'll grow because she's not stretched out at all. I can't remember what mine called for, like what Jeez. weight. What this was yours? My fault, worsted weight. <clears throat> this is fingering held double, but everything, and this is too. Yeah, I, I did fingering held double for, yeah. all, for all of mine. Yeah. That's about the same as worsted weight. Uh, well, for most of it. Mm -hmm. So this is sheep cheese. Sheep cheese. I bought a kit from around the table knit, around the table yarns. Around the table yarns. Um, online mm -hmm. during a yarn crawl last year for a bag. I think it's called the Fair bag or the Fay bag. Maybe it's by Tony with TNL Yarn Crafts. Um, I do have a link for that too. So it was a kit that she had pulled colors for, and I don't know if she designed it specifically for Around the Table, but they released that pattern at the Yarn Crawl. Nice. Um, she has some ties around here. It's pretty cool. She's, she's in Ohio quite a bit. I can't nice. remember where she's at now, but that's another YouTuber that I started watching when I started crocheting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th when I picked up that pattern, same with the mini granny square thing, mm -hmm. little blubby that I wanted to make, it was kind of like just like my beginning theme with myself. Like mm -hmm. it was stuff that I, I still do want to make my lovey right. for mag, but I can't picture myself making that bag. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to find some other use for the yarn. So yeah. I grabbed that out of my stash. I'm like, this is perfect. So this is sheep cheese. <laughs> so is this, um, I held it. I held two colors double for this side and this right here. Nice. Um, this is Kramer Perfection from our LYS. So are these two. This is my Lobby Anime. I made a DK Wonder scowl. Sc scowl. Sorry. <laughs> a DK <laughs> Wonder. A DK One Skein Wonder cowl is what you I was it. trying to say. I mean, it's a tongue. That's a tongue twister. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then this is from a scarf that I made. This was like when I was kept buying one skein of thing. Before we learned. Yeah. Yeah. And I made the weirdest scarf. Like yeah. it's not long enough for anyone. I didn't, I couldn't put fringe on it like I wanted to because I ran out of yarn. So I need to really frog that and use it for something else. But this is what <laughs> I had sitting there. And then this is from my shrug. Nice. This is like scraps for my shrug. So I didn't even have to change here for the head. That's pretty cool. This matches here. Yeah. This was just some good old 
good old acrylic stash. I like the blue eyes too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that I mm -hmm. chose those. I don't even think I sent those ones to you. They were just like, I saw them sitting there. They're and I'm cute. like, yeah, those are good. the ones. That's good. And then this is so fun. I got this from Michael's. It was just like a, whatever their normal brand is. Mm -hmm. um, I made a Build-A-Bear sweater out of this for my, for my daughter's Build-A-Bear. I, I thought it was so cute, but it was like Christmas time. And mm -hmm. like, this kind of reminds me of like Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Your <laughs> so, kids are really into Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, right? Leanna yeah. is, yeah. Cute, cute. Okay, so that's the emotional support chickens. If you want to join our cow, our craft along, if you don't know what that is, um, post your finished chicken on Instagram with the hashtag KNC Chicken Cow. KN. Okay. K and K chicken cow. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a lot of fixing and post here. We're good. We're good. That's okay. Okay. K and K chicken, chicken cow. cow. Uh, we will check that out on April first. I think is we we decided this is the cutoff. Um, or fourteenth, eleventh. Okay. We're gonna here. Let's start. That'll also right be on the screen. Um, <laughs> And <laughs> so once that is finished, we are going to select a winner for a cool prize that we yeah. don't actually know what it is yet, but it's yeah. something cool. Got Definitely some, some stitch markers involved. Some little little cute things in the works. We'll some see. stickers. We'll see what happens. Fun stuff. So yeah. those are our chickens. Do you yeah. have any um, clue what your name is going to be? I thought of something earlier today. Oh, I remember. I've been rewatching the cartoon Bee and Puppy Cat. I watch a lot of cartoons. Um, <laughs> I've never heard of it. I always have. It's really cute. It's uh, by Natasha Allegri, who's an artist that I really like. And there's a dog in the cartoon named Sticky. Love it. And since I'm not getting more dogs anytime soon, I have two dogs right now. I might name my chicken Sticky. Sticky I love the it. chicken. <laughs> um, mine's name is Flora, and that yeah. is the fairy's name from Sleeping Beauty. Cute. I cute. see your cat. Love it. Love it. Oh, yeah. Hello, me lady. Down here. We'll see if she comes up and joins us. Hi. Oh, yeah. She thinks she's on stage right now. I love it. Um, sheep cheese. Sheep cheese. So you actually even called the store, right, to see how it was pronounced? Was that you or is that somebody else? No, someone else told me that. Okay. I didn't tell you okay, that, but okay. it wasn't me. So we, you know, we call it sheep cheese. <laughs> I was trying to Let figure out how to actually pronounce the brand. I think it's Dutch. And the closest I got, and I'm like, I'm like half German, so I, <laughs> I can sort of do it. Yep, yes. This is what we're talking about. And I am certain that I've butchered it, so I apologize. That's but okay. We like to call it sheep cheese because sheep cheese is really cute. Sheep and cheese. We're fans, so. Ooh, this one's called Shout Downtown. To downtown. I like it. All right, we want to talk about our whips. I do. Sheep All cheese right. leads me sheep into my wheat, my weeps, my <laughs> sheep weeps. Weep <laughs> I wish that was on accident the first time I accidentally did that. <laughs> I am working on yet another, my third, I think, vanilla sock. Excellent. By the crazy sock lady. Yeah. So this one I'm doing longer. And I wanted to like definitely stick out of my shoe so I can really show it off, you know. I This is my first time using this kind of yarn for knitting socks. Before I used, like I said, the Wollens and Nash and just some random scrap yarn. Mm -hmm. Did the same size, but I am still nervous that the sock is not going to fit me. It just feels so much, like, tighter. I think it Hopefully it's in my head. Um, yeah. I just got to the foot on this. I am using 9-inch circulars. Mm -hmm. This thing hanging is just some barber cord because I don't like the chances of my stitches falling off because I don't know how to pick back up right now. Yeah, you use it as you use it as stitch stoppers, right? That's, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, yeah. I just like really shove it on there. Mm -hmm. My little my little flower stitch stopper here. I'll do the. Uh, you want me to do the? Uh, <laughs> we'll see if it focuses. The hand <laughs> <clears throat> is from North Coast Notions. Yeah, by Katie. It's in the works. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm glad. So, um, I started this a while ago. I did finish the gusset decreases yesterday, I think. So now, like, the foot is so easy peasy. Yeah, like, that's yeah. car knitting, that's movie knitting. Like, that that feels good to be done. So I did get yeah. two of these. Actually, you picked this up for me in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And this is called Central, this colorway. I also call it my Sesame Street socks. I, too, I love cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on? Cool. Um, What have I got going on? Let's see. So I have a couple 
This is one, I actually just picked this back up last night. I will talk about this first. Um, this is actually another one of my favorite projects and I got into my little sock talk and forgot to mention it. This is my Traveler Shawl by Andrea Mowry and this is hand spun. So I have been spinning very casually since like July. And I actually, with the help of a woodworker, woodworker friend, made my own spinning wheel from a pattern on Etsy. It turned you have out to post a picture. Of okay, that. <laughs> I will. I will. Um, it turned out okay. I, you know, I did the best I could measuring, measuring woodworking. It's very cool to me, but I think it's not my strong suit. Um, but it was a good experiment. It was kind of like, let me see if I actually like doing this because I had a right. couple drop spindles, and I was like, this is kind of fun, but it's also like, I don't know. It's hard on my shoulders. I haven't worked at my shoulder strength. Do you yet. have any drop spindle spun in that? No, because I, once I got my wheel, so I ended up getting uh, an Ashford tradi traditional, that's a mouthful, Ashford traditional spinning wheel in like September. And I really love it. And ever since I got that, I have not touched my drop spindles. Uh -huh. So people, I know people do both and I'm sure I will go back at some point and try it again. But this was like, I should hold it up so you can actually see it. This is like a, a production project. This is like 800 something yards. Thank you, that mm -hmm. helps. Look, I rubber banded my, my yarn nice. ball. Um, but yeah, so this has been really fun. It is, I think, like 40% of the way done. So it's gonna be nice. pretty big. I still need to spin another like 400 yards, but I have all the wool. Um, this is a combination of wools. This is like three or four different breeds, three or four different dyers. Um, That's so awesome. But I'm having a lot of fun. I'm learning how to gradient spin where you, you know, you might have like a rainbow striped piece of wool and then you split it in half Ooh, and you spin one, cool. you know, one way and then the other one you divide up a different way so that it like plies together really neat. So that's my biggest like end-to-end <clears throat> -end undertaking so far. But I am working on this. I started this a couple of months ago. Um, kind of put it down for a couple other things, but I am picking it back up now. Where's your little marker from? That's so cute. Um, it's like a fishbowl with glitter it's, in it. It was some little charm that I got off of Etsy and it's, yeah, it's, you're not gonna be able to see this probably, but it's got little star glitter in it. It's pretty it's cute. so cute. Thanks. What else have I got? I have, so I had my first crochet project in several years. So like I said, I had done a little smidge of amigurumi and two, two hats, three hats. So Nicole actually recently tested it. This, this is the Scarfy Shawl by Fiber and Fox. Um, Isabella, is that her name? Yep. yep. So I saw that and I was like, this is so cute. I just love the, you know, the little changes in the pattern. I love the, how the eyelets look and everything. I was like, maybe I will try this. I love the little pointed scarf, kind of like you've got yours on right now. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a crochet hook. I'm gonna try this out. I had had a little bit of this yarn. This is the Koigu Premium Painters Palette Merino. Wow. PPPM on the label. My goodness. Uh, I think this is called Life. But I had gotten this for another project and I just bought a second mini skein of it to try this out with because I thought it would be pretty festive. Um, so the cool thing about that pattern is yeah. it's supposed to be like no yarn chicken guarantee. Right. Or almost guarantee. I think she right. can't <laughs> use the word guarantee. But you... Way as you go, mm -hmm. you can use like, I think the minimal, the smallest amount you can use is 20 grams and that's for like a headband or oh, something. Nice. That's like a mini. Yeah. Yeah. But it is so cool because mm -hmm. you just keep going. Once you think you're about halfway done, mm -hmm. you know, you is when you would start decreasing. So that right. was one of the biggest things of those pattern or of that pattern rather. Mm -hmm. I made a whole fingering weight skein. Nice. Yeah. Yours minus is really minus long. a few because yeah, yeah. I'm bad at winding. <laughs> <laughs> winding my cakes up but you know yeah and this I yours is really long it yeah. looks really cool I want mine a little shorter than that because I I just want to kind of, I mean kind of yeah. like that probably where you just can tie a little knot and then be done with it um so I have two of these little minis or like a mini and a half at this mm -hmm. point so we'll see I'm expecting it to be like yeah, big. yeah. We'll see what happens but yeah, yeah and it just got bigger after blocking too that was yeah. great like it was already big and then after I blocked it I was like yeah. oh my goodness like like, I'm glad I started, I mean, you tested it, so you yeah. did it before everybody else, but I'm glad I started mine after yours because I saw that yours blocked right. you and I was like, okay, I'm learning from how Nicole's turned right. out and how I want mine. I should have talked about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my Sophie oh, yeah. scarf. Um, I finished this a few weeks ago. This was my first non-sock knit. So, so pretty. 
It is in Segain Cocaine. I think the colorway was special. I don't know if it was like a special yarn or mm -hmm. if that was literally the colorway. Um, also from my local yarn store, the Sophie scarf is by Petite Knit on Ravelry, and she has an Instagram. This is a pretty popular pattern, like yeah. thousands and thousands of, oh, yeah. of makes. I'm also working on my Sophie shawl at home, but that's like going to be done in five years or something because it's huge. <laughs> <Let's figure out. laughs> right. So we'll see. Um, my other whips I have, this one I'm really excited about. This is the Ultramarine sweater by Tannis Labelle. And this is my on first, that. what's that? You got far on that. Yeah, I got too far. This is the one that I was telling oh, you. Oh yeah, oh no. <laughs> so um, this is oh, my no. first like real cabled project. I have kind of tried cables before, but this is my first, this will be my first FO that has cables in it. Um, if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, great pattern. It is knit flat and I am knitting my traveler shawl flat. And I'm like, you know, I will be more likely to get this done if I can do it around. So I tried to modify it and I think it'll be just fine. I mean, she wrote the pattern really nicely. It's very clear. It's, you know, it's a sweater. It's a sweater body, you know, chest, back sleeves. I'll figure it out. But I was thinking about the way this is cool. most, thanks, most uh, sweaters in the round are constructed. And I knit it kind of to the length that I wanted it below the armpit. Mm -hmm. And since she knit hers flat, she knit it thinking, you know, you sew it up to a certain point and then the armhole begins. So I went too far, <laughs> which is fine. I just had a moment the other day where I was like, I could have saved myself like three hours. <laughs> so oh, no. I just stopped and thought about this a little better. So anyway, lesson learned. You start to, you know, fudge patterns, modify patterns. You, you learn some things. Right. So anyway, the yarn is Patton's Classical in Blush and Hobby Kid Silk Mohair in Bubblegum. And I just love how they're coming together. Like, yeah. this pink, this isn't really my pink. It's, it's, so a little, it's a little muted for me, but with this mohair, it's just yeah. like... the combination cool. is so you. So I've been calling this my uh, strawberry yogurt raisin sweater because it reminds me of the little snacks that you get at my lunchbox as love a kid. It. So that's fun. I'm excited to continue on that. I just need to, like, put in my lifeline and commit right. to <laughs> fixing my, my user error. Um, this is my other whip right now. I have other ones, but these are the ones I'm actually like, trying to yeah, same. focus I look, on. My whip We're is terrible. Oh, you're very whip crazy, but like I'm pretty whip crazy too. Um, we'll talk, that's a thing we'll talk about sometime is how we manage our whips. Yeah, I just don't. <laughs> that's right. The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is just collect more. Right. Um, this is the Lume pullover and it's by Sari Nordland. Is and that your Sleeve Island sweater? This is my Sleeve Island sweater. I haven't You're even that close to being done. Are you on Sleeve Island yet? I know, and this has been sitting for like two months. I am. Are you the serious? Worst. This is my very first color work project. Um, I have since done a hat. I did the hat, the Christmas tree hat for your Cal in the winter time. Finished that. Did a hat for my dad. I did those doodle socks, and I started the scout shawl. The yeah. big, huge, shawl, yeah. the flat one um, by Florence Sperling. And all in that time, I have not finished this sweater. I have had so much fun making this sweater. And for some reason, that is so cute. I just got stalled out on the sleeves. Thanks. It looks like some <laughs> chunky yard. Like, is that, it's, a, it's was, just that a long knit? Um, no, it actually went really quick. Uh, the thing with the color work, I'm so excited to like get you started on color work because it is so addicting. It's just yeah. like. You just want to see, it. like, oh, what is the next one? It's like the self-striping yarn. You're like, yeah. what does this look like after I do this and this and this? Um, so I this, wanted to make that pattern. It's, I'll send it to you. It's awesome. Um, so, yeah, this one's on Ravelry, obviously. This is, I think there is color work on the sleeves as well, like down toward the bottom of the sleeves. Uh, some people don't do that color work. I might not just in the interest of time because I really want to get this done before mm -hmm. it gets too warm out. It's the end of March. You know, it's like yeah, nearing the end of sure. sweater season. But yeah, this is Lion's brand Fisherman's Wool. I think it's just natural is the name of the, or natural brown maybe. Mm -hmm. And then these are kind of a smattering of mostly Wool of the Andes by Knit Picks, but just, you know, various skeins that I had different yeah. amounts of. And super fun. I tried it on the other day and of course it looks funny because the sleeves don't exist and it's just kind of like held together with twine. Right. <laughs> I was wondering, and again, this is my first color work. And I think I did an okay job with the floats, but the thing I'm wondering about is it's a really deep color work yoke. So it goes like down below my chest here. Mm -hmm. And when I raise my arms, the whole thing kind of goes whoop, like this. Oh. Because the color work extends down below the arms. 
And I think it's just oh. a denser fabric right there. Yeah. So I got to figure out, you know, if, if my body just wants like a shallower yoke for the color work or if it was just, I had stuff too tight or what. And then what would you do in that case? Just drop the last color? Um, work I pattern? would, yeah, I mean, you could knit it. I got to stop putting this in front of my face. I could knit it down to here and stop where it's yeah. above the uh, armhole. And I think that might take care of part of what I was experiencing. Yeah. It might also just block nicer too. I mean, you know, you wash and block and it loosens up. Yeah. So we'll see. Those are just my thoughts when I tried it on. I was like, I have kind of wider wow. shoulders. And I know there's a lot of color work patterns that are known for being a little snugger around the shoulders. So maybe it's just a thing I have to watch out for. Cute. But it's like totally going on my, on my goal list for next year. Cool, cool. Yeah, I will send you the link. And it is, again, the Lume Pullover by Sari Nordland. Very, very fun pattern. Um, those are all my whips right now that I want to talk about. The other ones are kind of in disarray. <laughs> well, I have to pee, so I'll be yeah. right back. Yeah, okay. I'm um, sorry for the interruption. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyways, back to whips. Back to whips. Um, again, I have like a lot. <laughs> this was only the ones that I that I brought. Ballpark, how many do you have right now? I, you know? I honest to God have no. That's fine. Like you don't have enough fingers. Zero to clue. Yeah. We tried doing whip down Jan. I did great. I did not. I think I added like one thing. <laughs> I don't remember. I didn't do. Great. I got. I did get a lot done, yeah. but they were like yeah. smaller stuff. I. I mean, I've started like scarves. Seriously, mm -hmm. I started a single crochet scarf. Why? Like that's it's so boring. It's just fun to start. Well, compared stuff. to my other stuff, I mean. It's good to indulge. Sorry. So, I'm obsessed with project bags. I wish I had a million. <laughs> this is my Emma Ball Sheep and Sweaters project bag. Coffee stains, not included on the original. I added those <laughs> on accident. Um, and this is my Any Yarn Will Do sweater. Yeah. By Dora Does. I actually bought this pattern on Etsy, not Ravelry, because I did not uh, really know what Ravelry was at the time. So I didn't use it, rather. This is my sweater so far. I literally just Ooh. have sleeves left to do. You got a web. Yeah, there sorry. Um, my ends are not weaved in on most of my stuff, including my socks. I wear them with the uh, ends in between my toes. And this white speckled yarn is from Hobby Lobby. And it's, they're both fingering weight. The hot pink is from Botanical Yarns that was also part of my, my prize from Grocery Girls. Mm -hmm. So I am on, this whole sweater is extended single crochet. There's not really any shaping, but I'm on the sleeves and they do a lot of, de not a lot of decreases for the sleeves, but I did not follow any of the decreases. I think maybe I did one set. Oh, okay. So I am definitely looking for like a sweatshirty type of, yeah, yeah. you know, fit. And I feel like with the width that these sleeves are now, I, I feel good with that. Like, even mm -hmm. if they hang down a smidge, maybe I'll do one more decrease. Mm -hmm. But um, this was like, this is definitely one of my first big undertakings of yeah. like a crochet garment. I have one other big crochet garment and... It's the cutest top, but I made it a little too short. Like, I need to get either high-waisted jeans or high-waisted leggings to wear right, it with. Right. This I'll be able to wear with leggings or jeans. Mm -hmm. Like, it looks a little short, but it's not. And then this obviously isn't blocked at all. So, yeah. um, I have to finish a sleeve. I am doing long sleeves. And then I have one more to go. Yeah. I started this so good. November 1st. I really need wow. to finish it. So... You've, I mean, that's... That's a big project, though. You've come a long yeah. way. It looks really good. Yeah, I need to. Thank you. I need to finish um, winding my pink yarn. I don't mm -hmm. have any of that open right now. So once I do that, I will go back to sleeve knitting. I Or crocheting, rather. I have been knitting my sock since I haven't wound that up. And then my last whip that I'm going to talk about is... Get ready. Mm -mm -mm, my muscle bro. <laughs> muscle bro. Bad sinking news. Uh-oh. Bad news. My muscle bro is not on my needles dangerous. where it's supposed to be. Oh no. Which means, Katie. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. no. No, bro. Katie, help me off. start Show it off. my muscle bro. Doesn't look good. Oh shoot. You got your little ramen noodle now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, By no. Isolde Teague. Um, this is actually my own hand-dyed yarn. It is called yes. Winter Garden. 
It is so beautiful. It's a fingering weight. Thank you so much. <laughs> a fingering weight, Marina. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Is that yeah, a favorite wolf? Okay. Yeah. And I want to make the muscle bro. Muscle bro. And I'm just going to be your hype man and say that. I'm <laughs> muscle bro. <laughs> anyway. I think the beginning of the pattern is so stinking hard. Because all it's, he did literally just release a video, I think Saturday I texted you. Yeah. About the beginning of this. So I'm going to try again. Mm -hmm. Katie did start the first three rounds for me at our knit night. And it fell off I mean, the needles on the way over here. Yeah, I mean, you're starting on DPS. I think that's that's just tricky no matter oh, how you Oh, my it. word. Yeah. Like, if you yeah. want to talk about projects on Ravelry, this one has <laughs> so stinking many. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's so hard in the beginning. Oh. Like, how are people doing this? So... I have yarn. I have three skeins of yarn to make these hats. Like I have mm, this one. Mm -hmm. I have this by Red Stag Fiber. Yeah. Browns. Right. And um, browns. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So I would love to make this. I want to make myself one. Mm -hmm. I have more yarn from a leftover project I want to make my daughter one with. So I'm like, <laughs> must figure out how. Because it's fingering weight. Like, I can't crochet a hat out of that with one skein. Yeah. Because this yeah, is supposed to be, be like the yarn. perfect one skein hat and right. swatchless hat. That's mm -hmm. what it's kind of known mm -hmm. for. So it's a lot. But <laughs> at first when I started doing it, um, oh, I, I was using like obnoxiously big and long like DPNs. Right. So yeah, in were... our knit night, we switched that out. Right. Then I, and I started using some DPNs that I had already had for socks. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, um, you know, order myself a new set of DPNs that are the correct size, but uh, measurements are for boys. And now I have these super tiny <laughs> ones. So now I have very large DPNs and very short DPNs. So I'm really... You're still looking for the Goldilocks of DPNs? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. Um, I don't know what size these are. Maybe finding a ruler would help. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah. Why, Nicole? Why? Like... Maybe they'll end up being perfect for some other project. Well, it's the, it's the like, hoarding impulse, too. <laughs> you have so many. <laughs> it was just, like, a cheap Amazon pack. Oh, yeah. That's why. So... Yeah. We'll see, but yeah, those are like, those are one of my only purchases, my weird DPNs. And then I got yeah. these little tags off Amazon too. That's a nice. handmade. That's all it is. I had some of these on Etsy. Sorry for the crinkling. And it's an ASMR video now. I got ones that said like made by Nick, I think. Mm -hmm. I cannot find them anywhere. And I'm so disappointed Aww. because the creator of the tags that I bought, yeah. for some reason, they're not on Etsy anymore. It says like... Aww unavailable with a little broken TV or something. So obviously there's other ones out there, but yeah. I really like this person's style. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna order more, but these ones are just little normie handmade ones. So I thought those were cute. Those those are my only purchases this week. Nice. Uh, my purchases, I have, oh, I just have two, I think. So one of mine actually came in the mail yesterday. I was pretty stoked about it. Um, like I said, Ooh. I spin a little bit and I, I have, I mean, just the same as yarn. Like I've amassed more wool than I'm gonna spin anytime soon because it's so pretty and I'm right. spinning different breeds and I'm like, oh, this breed's so soft. This breed's so springy. I gotta try this new one I haven't tried before. Yeah. So this is from Jakira Farms on Etsy. Shakira, Shakira. Yeah, and I bought from them before. Um, really good stuff. This is a mixed BFL. It's 75% white and 25% black and it has just a touch of color in it. I thought this had a little like <laughs> Fruit Loops Sorry. flavor to it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Big and lamb. Yeah, yeah. BFL. Yeah. BFL. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have to find a good bleep noise now. So anyway, uh, BFL, as we said, uh, but it's got a little Fruit Loops color. It's got a little pink and a little yellow and a little green kind of hint to it, uh, from what I can tell. That's old school. That's like really old Fruit Loops before they had, before they had the purple and the blue back when I was a kid. Anyhow. I'm going to make a sweater with this and with some BFL that is similar to this without color in it. So it's just kind of like the beige and the brown. Like a striped sweater? Probably. I actually don't know yet. I just have this like vague picture of a sweater in my head. Nice. And it's beige and brown, this, and then I have just the brown. Nice. So we'll see what happens. At first I thought color work and then I was like, maybe it's just like big fat stripes. We'll see. The other big thing. Big fat stripes that... for your big fat lamb. Exactly. Exactly. 
The other purchase that I made that arrived this week was this uh, Cotton Supreme DK yarn by Universal Yarn, and I got this from yarn.com. Very easy to remember. <laughs> I, I like Universal Yarn. I do too. Um, yeah. This is, yes, this is all cotton, and this color is called Holiday Red, and so it was like 50% off. It's hot pink. I love it. I was like, okay, oh yeah, it totally it's is. Green and deal. It's like, a, it's like the perfect, like, reddish hot pink yeah. color. Yeah. So I am a big fan, actually, of when stores and stuff work pink into their Christmas stuff. So I have no qualms. But I am going to make the Sweet Friends Tea by Kate Garden Ooh. out of this. So that'll be probably my first, like, summary make of the year. Yeah, those are my purchases. How fun. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, uh... I think that is just about everything we had on our little agenda our little here. Agenda. <laughs> That's our yeah. first episode. Um, yeah. So thanks so much for taking the time to, to join us and hang out for a little bit. And hopefully you got uh, a little a laugh or, you know, got to get for some sure. of your project done or whatever. I um, think that I think we're hoping to post once a month. Mm -hmm. um, I have no clue how long we've gone this time, but who knows what it'll be next time either. So. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're playing it by ear. Thanks for coming. Hope to see you again. Like and subscribe if you had fun. Subscribe. <laughs> Smash the like and subscribe button. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye.